Hey guys, John from FlightMikeAlpha.com and today we're going to be looking at a little uh, pretend flight here that we planned uh, from Venice to Punta Gorda to the Melbourne airport. So we're going from a non-towered airport to a towered Class D airport on up over to Melbourne airport, another Class D airport. And we're going to look at the sectional chart and all of the applicable things to the, our route of flight that we can find on this sectional chart. So we're going to start off here in Venice. Let's just say this whole flight's at night. Well, in Venice, if we take off and we have to turn back to the airport, it'll be really easy to find because we're going to see a bunch of city lights in this yellow area. And we're then going to be able to look here and see a red, I'm sorry, a white and green rotating beacon, a green and white rotating beacon at the airport. That's on all the time. We can look over here and we can see that there's lights at the airport and there's a little asterisk telling us that the, there are lighting limitations. Those lighting limitations are probably that it's pilot controlled lighting and we would confirm that in the AFD and uh, look at the actual airport um, information. And we do know, in fact know that at Venice we use three clicks to put the lights on low, five for medium and seven for high within five seconds clicking that mic um, will turn the lights on at the airport. So we will have runway lights, taxiway lights and we'll have that green and white rotating beacon on the airport to help us find it. We'll have weather information on 119.275. We can set, say the weather's not working, we could set our altimeter to about 18 feet since that's field elevation if we couldn't get an altimeter setting. We'll turn the lights on with the click in the mic. We got at least a 5,000 foot runway is the longest runway available there. Not every runway is 5,000 feet, but the longest one is 5,000. So we can probably try to use that to take off of and we could call uh, the UNICOM, call the FBO, if we needed fuel or anything like that on this frequency here. We can also use that as our CTAF frequency because we have that little C with the magenta background. That's our common traffic advisory frequency we'll call all the other aircraft on. Notice here that it's right pattern for 1-3, so if we're taking off runway 1-3, and if we were staying in the pattern for any reason, we'd want to make right traffic. And as we depart the airport and we start flying on our heading down towards Punta Gorda, we could navigate there maybe by means of a VOR because we see we have a VOR compass rose around here. And what radio would we want to dial in? Well, we want to go to the station, so we'll look at this uh, little uh, VOR compass rose. Remember this compass rose, see how it's slanted off here a little bit and at an angle? The true lines, the true section lines are here that's aligned with true north. And this is magnetic north. So the VOR compass rose is actually printed on the map, a little cockeyed, to account for that five degrees of west magnetic variation. So it looks like we're going to be about a 295 or so from the station, 298. That would mean we're probably about a, a 118 heading to the station out of Venice for our VOR. And then we could, if we were landing there, call up tower about 10 miles out on 121.0. Now if this was after 10 p.m. we could look up and we can see that this is a part-time tower with that star there. So we look in the AFD, find out the tower is closed at 10 p.m. We would just go ahead and use this 121.0 as our CTAF. Again, we have pilot controlled lighting, lighting limitation. So probably three clicks, five clicks, and seven clicks to determine the lighting intensity. We could get our weather information on 135.675 for the airport. And elevation, 26 feet. Longest runway they have available there, 7,200 feet, 7,200. And Unicom for the FBO, 122,975. And we can look up some information for the airport for takeoff and determine that the FBO is open 24-7. So if we need any services, we can call them 24-7 on that frequency and get fuel or a rental car or anything else. It says here, see NOTAMS directory for class D slash E service hours. So we'd want to look in the AFD, the airport facility directory, or NOTAMS to see what times the tower are open, in, is open and closed for class D slash E service hours. Um, notice that um, the AFD is now called a chart supplement. So if you're looking for something and you find chart supplement, that's actually the AFD. They just changed the name uh, pretty recently here. We notice here that we're leaving the Class Delta airspace, and let's assume it is still Class D airspace, tower still open. As we fly out here, we have Class E airspace from the surface on up. As we get out here, if we're at 1,000 feet, we're in Class G airspace. Once we're above 1,200, we're back in Class E airspace, and our visibility requirements change accordingly. So as we're flying out here at night, we would see just a whole bunch of nothing out here. We would see the town of Arcadia lit up nicely off our left. We could use that as a checkpoint, and as we approach here, 
looks like we're going to be going through the Lake Placid West MOA. We're going to need to call up the controlling agency, and we would find that on the side panel of our VFR chart. We can go over here to the side panel and find out who controls the uh, Lake Placid East, North, and West MOA is Miami Center. So we want to get a hold of Miami Center. Don't necessarily know a frequency from Miami Center, so we're going to have to find that out somehow. We could either look at all over the chart, try to find that, or we could simply just look at a IFR low and route chart. We'll get into those a lot later. But uh, we would want to somehow contact Miami Center. So let's say we don't know how to contact Miami Center. We don't know a frequency. Can't find one on the chart anywhere. Well, we would just call up Flight Service. We can find frequencies for Flight Service, and they can provide us with the frequency from Miami Center in that general area so we could get a hold of them. We can look here, and it looks like Sebring has an RCO, a remote communications outpost, for St. Pete Flight Service, St. Petersburg Radio, on 122.25. So we can go ahead and call them up before we get there, make sure that the MOA is cold. Not that we need to make sure it's cold to go through it, but we don't really want to fly through a hot one. We want to make sure that it's cold, although we could go through it anyways. Now we do have to make sure the restricted area is cold cold and we can go through it so we'll talk to Miami Center about that before we bust on through there and then continue on course on over to Melbourne where they have a class D tower let's go ahead and go back to our whole world VFR chart there so they've got a class D tower it abuts the Patrick Air Force Base class D so we'll want to watch out for that not go too close there we could navigate from Punta Gorda to Melbourne using a VOR it looks like so we could use the Punta Gorda VOR to get away from Punta Gorda, and about halfway there or so, we could change over and go to the Melbourne VOR. And the Melbourne VOR frequency we find right up here, 110.0. We got our Morse code there and all that. The channel 37 the just simply means that there is DME available. That's more of a military thing to worry about. And these other frequencies here, 243, you may notice that your radio in your little Cessna 150 or whatever you're flying doesn't go that high. That's because that's a military frequency. We don't have to worry about it. So we could also contact uh, St. Pete's Flight Service here on these frequencies above our VOR box. They can receive us on 122.1, and we could receive them over the Melbourne VOR if we turn up our nav radio volume. So we're going to go ahead and go into Melbourne. Let's look at the information here. Oh, looks like it's another part-time tower. They may close at some point, and we'll have to, again, see the NOTAMS directory for Class D slash E surface effective hours. So look at that chart supplement, AFD, to figure out when the tower opens and closes. Figure out if you're going to call up 10 miles out and say, hey, Melbourne Tower, Cherokee 99007 Whiskey. We are 10 miles to the southwest with information delta, or are you just going to listen to the ATIS? and then contact CTAF. We notice that CTAF is the same frequency after a certain time at night. And notice that the airport elevation is 33 feet and lighting is pilot controlled. 102 feet, that's not 102, that's actually 10,200. So 10,200 is the longest runway they have in Melbourne. They got some shorter ones there, but 10,200 is the longest one. And if you wanna check what the other runway lengths are and what the numbers are, check your AFD, it'll tell you. And 12295 is the FBO frequency. Now, AFDs have become a little bit of a thing of the past. People don't always carry those paper charts around anymore. A lot of people use iPads or Android tablets, Garmin Pilot and ForeFlight. And those are great because we could just click on it if we were using the app and click on Melbourne, get some information, and look at all the information it gives us. It gives us all these frequencies, gives us the runways they have there, 9 right, 2 7 left, 9 left, 2 7 right, the distances that they are, the widths, all sorts of information that's really, really handy to have. Even fuel prices and things like that if your tablet is connected um, to Wi-Fi or to data somehow or another. So that is how we would get there. We're looking, we probably want to pick some other checkpoints. What could we pick for checkpoints? Well, we have some lakes, we have some little towns. Remember those little yellow areas are probably gonna be lit up at night. We're gonna have some towers that we could choose um, to use as checkpoints. But, you know, a single tower standing alone is really hard to identify. So we'd want to pick, you know, like two towers to the left of our flight path and two to the right that we should see at the same time. We'd want to pick a group of very tall towers or two towers all by themselves amongst a bunch of swamp land might be easy to identify. So things like that that are very easy, clear to identify. Um, busy roads, interstates could be good at night, but some of these smaller, less travel roads may not be so good. So things like this, you may not have any cars on them, probably not any streetlights, and it would just be totally black. So how about the altitude we're gonna fly over there at? 
Well, let's look at our chart and we can see some uh, minimum elevation figures here, MEFs, these numbers here, and showing us that in these quadrants, the highest obstacle is 700 feet, 800 feet, 1,700 feet over there, 1,900 where we're coming from. So it looks like since we're heading to the east and we need to be on an odd plus 500, 3,500 would be pretty appropriate. Maybe if the wind's favorite, 5,500. It's at night, it'd be great to have some extra altitude. And on such a long flight, 5,500, even 7,500 is not unheard of. Remember, they do recommend supplemental oxygen above 5,000 feet density altitude at night, something to consider. But that is the basics of us navigating from Venice to Punta Gorda to Melbourne via our VFR sectional and all the things we're going to encounter along the way. Hopefully that was helpful. If you have any questions at all, leave them in the comments below. Make sure you subscribe to us so you get all of our latest episodes and give us a thumbs up on this video. Like I said, any questions, leave them in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure you share us on social media, Twitter, Facebook, all those great sites. If you can't fly every day, then fly at mycalpha.com. We'll see you all next time.